Hi, I'm Jason Carl. I'm the producer for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition at White Wolf Entertainment, and I'm the chief executive officer of By Night Studios, and I'm here today to let you ask me anything. Go ahead and start. I've got some help today from members of the uh, White Wolf community so that I can uh, talk to you uh, without monitoring the uh, chat stream myself. So if you don't hear your question uh, answered right away, be patient, ask it again, and we'll try to get to as many questions as we possibly can in the hour that we have. Okay, VT the Unreliable has asked the first question. He said that um, Martin has said that in V5, you really want to focus on political horror. While I think your intentions are good, there have been some missteps with the rise of the far right that can be dangerous and send the wrong signal to people who want to play V5. Are you now or can you commit to consulting with experts or academics that can help frame these conflicts better in the coming books? Okay, that is a very specific question to a much broader issue. So. Um, let me say, first of all, that yes, we will do a better job at uh, consulting with experts in various fields, not, this sh not just this one, to make sure that the material we write um, reflects accurately the needs and concerns of our customers. The question goes to the, the broader uh, context of, I think, what we're all here to talk about, and that is something Vonier is going to ask. For W Were Werewolf 5, how will you take into account players with pre-existing traumas? And will Black Furies accept cis male guru in the tabletop game too, and why? Okay. Werewolf 5th edition. So, two answers to two questions. How will you take into account players with pre-existing traumas? So, um, I'll refer you back to the first answer that I gave, which is that we will, in fact, um, do a much better job in consulting with experts in various fields to make sure that we are more sensitive and aware to a variety of issues that might come up uh, in the role-playing games that we produce. They do contain very, um, very dark and mature subject matter. And we want to make sure that we don't um, make anyone feel um, uninvited or uh, unincluded uh, in our games uh, or in our community. So yes, we will be doing that. The second question is, will Black Furies accept cis male guru in the tabletop game to why? That's a question I'm not able to answer yet because Werewolf 5 is currently just starting development and we need feedback from the community on topics like that so that we know what concerns you have and what we should be looking at really carefully as we develop Werewolf the Apocalypse for the 5th edition. Mighty Nobbler asks, hi Jason, thanks for this. You're welcome. Will there be a ready-made story for new players and storytellers at launch? I'm currently running V20 with players new to World of Darkness. It can be a bit daunting. Will V5 have a story for new people? So the answer is yes. You will see a quick start story very quickly for V5, very close to or right at launch. Uh, and it will be um, a story that enables you to jumpstart right into the game immediately with pre-generated characters, an easy-to-follow plot line, um, instructions on how to um, make uh, the systems work in a new learning experience for new players. And um, the storyline itself, um, to ease people into it, um, in V5, the tabletop role-playing core book, which I have right here, the very first copy, fresh off the press, um, you're going to find a lot of story aids for new storytellers explaining how to use the various elements of V5 in setting up stories for players who may be entirely new to the world of darkness and to vampire. Posier88 asks, is the Sabbat still going to be an antagonist in your normal Camarilla City Chronicle, or are they all gone to the Middle East? It's really up to the storyteller to decide how to use the Sabbat and any antagonist in their local chronicle. However, 
the Sabbat are still very much a part of Vampire the Masquerade in 5th edition. You will see uh, a book dedicated to the Sabbat um, in 2019, and you're going to find that they are very much capable of still being the kind of antagonist that can make a Camarilla or Anarch held city uh, quake right down to its vampiric boots. Vanier asks, will you openly tell the fuck social justice warriors, sensitivities, alt-riders, and neo-Nazis who've been using RPGs as a recruiting grounds since the age of Conan that the world of darkness is not for them? Yes. Yes, we will explicitly say that. V5 is no more for Nazis than it is for real-life undead horrors. Vampires and Nazis are both monsters, but we do know the difference between fictional evil and real evil that we have to confront in the world today. Vampire has always been about the exploration of evil, and that thematic core has been at the heart of the game since the very first edition, but the exploration of evil has never been an aspirational philosophy. Evil does exist in society, in ourselves, in, um, in our culture, and exploring it in those areas um, is still part of the game. And we don't think that including uh, a neo-Nazi reference in V5 is the equivalent of an endorsement of that viewpoint. And we don't think that it's actually an invitation to neo-Nazis or any other hate group to buy our game or participate in our community. White Wolf is a very diverse uh, team, and we feel that we are a global company and that we have a global community, and that everybody is welcome in that community, unless you are a Nazi, or a neo-Nazi, or a member of any other hate group that uses these disgusting philosophies to advance your hateful agendas. If you are a member of one of those groups or support those agendas, we don't want you in our community. You aren't welcome, and if we find you spreading your hate in our community, you will be shown the door. Um, we don't want your money. You can keep it. Caffeinated Conquests has a question. What advice would you have for us who support White Wolf's maxim of going bravely into the darkness and want to do it properly. And how can we best support that maxim on our end? Mm, okay, that's a very thoughtful question. Give me a moment. I'm gonna have some coffee and let us read nothing into this except that I like coffee. Going bravely into the darkness um, has always been part of the, the Vampire the Masquerade design ethos, again, right from the very beginning. In the V5 core book, we give you some tools that help the players and the storytellers calibrate um, darkness and um, some of its uh, themes at your table. We talk about how to set boundaries, how to discuss with each other where is the appropriate line to draw for us. Um, what's appropriate for one group may not be appropriate for another, and we think it is um, perfectly appropriate for each group to decide where that line is drawn. What we need to do better at as White Wolf is to expand on those tools. We do have them in V5, but when we release the uh, PDF at Gen Con on August 2nd, you're going to find expanded sections with new con about, content about that um, that provides even more explicit guidelines for how you can do that at your table. The short answer, come full circle is talk to each other, is to discuss it um, openly and respectfully and make sure that when um, boundaries are crossed, there's a mechanism at the table for signaling that and making sure that everyone feels comfortable and included. Posier88 says, can you also tell us if, and if so, how, the humanity rules have changed from the alpha play test to the final results? Yes, absolutely. Humanity is still very much at the heart of Vampire the Masquerade, and in 5th edition, that hasn't changed at all. 
When we released the pre-alpha and then in the alpha, those were both vertical slices, very thin pieces of the game that didn't show all systems. In fact, for each of them, we included a note that said, if you don't see something you were looking for, but you think should be here, be patient with us while we develop it. And that's the same for humanity. Humanity involves uh, a system of um, beliefs and touchstones. Beliefs are what uh, a vampire values, and players are encouraged to create those beliefs that for them are lines that they would not normally cross. And for many characters, that will be the beliefs that we all have as, as humans and members of a global culture. But they might be very specific to individual vampires. The, um, the touchstones that attach to humanity are mortals, people, who represent things that keep the undead heart from sliding deeply into the beast. And those work with humanity in a complex but very fun system at the table that um, makes sure that uh, the struggle of vampire, humanity against the beast, is still at the heart of the game. The transgressions against humanity leave um, you with stains, marks on your soul that you must then scrub clean by going through the, uh, the, the actions and behaviors that would be in line with your beliefs and that may protect your touchstones. It's a system that we're very, very proud of and we're very excited to show to you in full at Gen Con this year. Inclusive Gaming asks, how will White Wolf engage with the community in the future to get feedback? build a sense of safety and inclusion, and develop the community into one that allows us to dive deep into the darkness in a way that helps all of us face the challenges of our real world. Exploring the themes of evil means that the game obviously does go into some very dark places. Exploring evil in our society, in our culture, in ourselves is, we think, um, a very good way to identify evil in those places and to oppose it and combat it. But we can't do it alone and we can't do it without um, the proper tools. I already talked about some of the ways in which the game itself will help. With community though, our intention is to begin engaging more positively and frequently with the community immediately to bring on community managers to help us uh, make sure that we hear your concerns and that we are listening actively and that those concerns get reflected um, into our products, our events, um, our community communications, and uh, all, the other, um, all the other materials that we provide for you to enjoy the world of darkness. Baselios Alexios asks, Jason, will you disavow Antifa and other segregationist left-wing movements just as the same as you disavowed right-wing hate movements or not? That's a simple question. It seems like a simple question, but it's not a simple question. What we disavow is, um, is hate on any end of the political or social spectrum. Um, if, a, uh, if an organization, if an individual is pushing hatred and intolerance, as part of its agenda, then yes, we do disavow it. Creighton One asks, when the full PDF is released at Gen Con, is that when the pre-order folks will have their PDF? Yes, the, um, the customers who have ordered, pre-ordered the book will get, their, um, will get their code to download the PDF on the same day that it's released at Gen Con, which is August 2nd. Each book comes with a code that lets you download a free PDF also. So if you end up with multiple copies of the book, that means you get multiple PDFs and you can give one to a friend. Vonnegar, Vonnegar asks, including the neo-Nazi reference is okay, but placing it and wording it like that, adding other dog whistle elements without going into conspiracy theories, there's honestly way too many elements from all to be a mere coincidence. I'm glad you're going to be going the Shoah route instead of the Gypsies one. Okay, well, thank you for that. Not exactly a question, but it does allow me to, um, to uh, introduce an idea, um, or sorry, introduce a, a, an element of the conversation that um, I should have mentioned before. 
when we included the, uh, the neo-Nazi um, masquerading as an alt-right, what we intended for it to be was an example of one of the many kinds of vampires you might find in the Bruja clan. And we didn't intend for its placement to put it on any kind of moral equivalency with any other concepts uh, or vampires that were included in that section. We tried to make a really clear distinguishment between everything that you might find in the clan and archetypes that we thought would be more appropriate for player characters. And the fact that we did not message that clearly, that we didn't communicate it clearly, is on us. We blew it. And when we design our books in the future, we now know that that's something that we have to do. When we make mistakes like that, we need to hear from you. You let us know that you did not, um, did not see our point and didn't appreciate it. And for that, we're grateful. Mighty Nobbler asks, thanks for answering my earlier question. You're welcome. Also want to ask, are there plans for source books such as L.A. by Night, etc. for V5? Especially curious to know what became of the Free State's post-Beckett's Jihad diary. Got into the vampire games via Redemption and Bloodlines and have a soft spot for Los Angeles. I have a soft spot for Los Angeles, too. In fact, uh, I just came from there um, last night and this morning. Um, one of the great things about White Wolf is that we are a family of uh, creative teams uh, across many different partnerships and um, licensees. Um, licensees like, um, like Onyx Path, like By Night Studios, like Jobach, like uh, uh, PDA, like uh, Jackalope, um, and many others. And the source books that you're going to see in the future will come largely from our licensee partners. So books like um, Los Angeles by Night are things that you could well see in the future. And if, um, if anyone wants to uh, submit uh, proposals for those uh, and look for uh, licensee opportunities, we'd be more than well happy to hear your pitch. Girly Bits asks, Digital tools have become commonplace at the table. What kinds of tools will be available to the community to have digital versions of books on their online storage for their character sheets or something more? Okay. I like digital tools too. Uh, and the more I use them, the more convenient I find them at the table when I'm storytelling. World of Darkness Online, um, uh, worldofdarkness.com, excuse me, is our official community hub. And on the site right now, you'll find um, a wealth of information about Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition, as well as uh, the rest of the World of Darkness. You'll also find that there are digital copies of, the, um, of all, many of the back catalog books for sale. They, you'll find that you can subscribe to um, worldofdarkness.com and uh, get access to all of those books in a very handy inline reader that you can have on your phone or your tablet. And we're also planning tools such as V5 character sheet storage and ways to play V5 online uh, at worldofdarkness.com that we're planning to release. And uh, when we have information for you about their availability, you'll be able to read about it on our social media. Doji Girl 999 says, how do you take your coffee? Black, always black, all black, all the time. I'm staring because I don't want to mispronounce the, the, the name. El Goblin, El Goblino 666, excuse me asks, why did you choose that art style for the book? Don't you think it's too clean? Every bruja is a model posing for the camera. We're very proud of the art style uh, of the book. And we chose it because we wanted a very contemporary, uh, we wanted a very contemporary design that would reflect what we felt would be the vampires of, the, of today uh, in the modern world. And we've chosen a mixture of not only photography, but you're also going to find in the book um, illustration, and you will find um, etched art, and some other examples 
will include, um, let me find you a good one that uh, I think people would like to see. Digital art. And those styles combined with the uh, beautiful layout that uh, Free League and Free League did for us, we think gives the book a very, uh, very sleek contemporary feel. So it feels like something that you might find um, tonight. The um, the Bruja models in particular um, are all are all people from um, the Los Angeles area um, who we worked with very closely to um, be as authentic as possible. That we drew from uh, local communities there, and um, Many of them are not models, as a matter of fact. Some of the models that we use in the book are professionals, and some are just people like, like us. Northern Fire, whoop, Northern Fire asks, will we see more globally inclusive source books and focus? Yes. Um, as I mentioned before, we do consider ourselves a global community, a global company with a hugely diverse audience from all around the world. And one of our core um, values as a company is to make sure that we do increase and improve our global focus. We hope that our licensee partners will bring you many books that focus on all areas, um, all areas of the world, uh, not only in Vampire the Masquerade, but in Werewolf the Apocalypse and Mage the Ascension and all the other World of Darkness lines as well. If there's something that you think you, uh, that you want to see from us and you're not seeing, then I would encourage you to let us know. Okay, this is just not fair. Trogdar the Burninator asks, what wine pairs best with a game of V5? Mm. Well, I've been experimenting for a little while now, and uh, I think that uh, the choices come down to two. One would be the... Um, 2014 uh, Stag's Leap Artemis, and the other is always going to be uh, an Agri Bikover from Hungary. You cannot go wrong with either choice. I recommend them both highly. Plastic Cage Plays asks us, will they be pre-release or beta content shared with the community in an attempt to head off some of these potential minefields and issues before things are released in a final form? Something perhaps through the official site. Yes, absolutely. We did release a pre-alpha and an alpha for Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition. And uh, we did have playtest cycles, but that clearly was not sufficient. And what we've learned from, these, uh, from this process is that going forward, all our games and titles need a much longer playtesting time and a much more um, dedicated focus on getting playtest feedback and opinion from uh, a broader cross-section of, um, of our audiences around the globe. Now, whether we'll do that through worldofdarkness.com uh, is probably very likely. That'll be, our, that'll be our best opportunity to make sure that everybody can access the materials and get us feedback. Maybe our last question. Nope. Carlotta Moroni asks, are you reconsidering the triggered thing? Was that a misstep? That was absolutely a misstep. We completely messed that up. We're very sorry about it. Um, triggered was a word that appeared in the pre-alpha last year um, in May of 2017. And we wanted a word that was evocative of the Bruja clan's um, tendency to slip into frenzy more easily than other clans. Um, and that was the word that we chose. The word also appeared in, in other contexts in the book, such as uh, this die roll may trigger this discipline or that effect may be triggered by this other effect. Um, and frankly, we just were not uh, sufficiently aware of um, how hurtful using the word in the way that we did might be. Um, we didn't consider carefully enough that um, the word is used in um, some mental health therapies, especially uh, around post-traumatic stress disorder, and um, that it can indeed become a, has become a pejorative uh, for some people who use it in a more hateful way. We're very sorry about it. As soon as that came to our attention, we felt really stupid. 
Um, we did apologize for it, and um, we apologize again. We took the word triggered out immediately, and we re-released the pre-alpha without it. And it does not appear in Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition in that context at all. Ellen Hard. Hi, Jason. It's Dimitri. Olga is nearby listening to you. You are looking good. <laughs> Thank you, Dimitri and Olga. I hope things are good for you. To those who want to rewrite the history and bury unpleasant parts of it versus those who want to remember all the pain done and see the world with all its darkness, you can't please both sides as I see it. How are you going to make the game playable for both, or will you choose sides? Thank you. We see our role as giving you the opportunities and the tools to tell stories in the world of darkness. And in the world of darkness, as we've talked about before, there are some, uh, some very difficult subjects. And we don't think it is our place to um, erase history or to deny that these things have happened. We do think it is our place to make sure that whenever we include those themes and those concepts, we do so in a way that is never gratuitous and that um, never goes to um, an area of shock for the value of shock uh, or dark just for the value of being, being dark. We want to make sure that we do it thoughtfully, that we do it critically, and that we tell you when we're doing it so that you can decide um, where to draw those lines in your own gaming experiences. And I think that will allow everyone who wants to enjoy Vampire in the World of Darkness to um, find the way to apply that, those elements correctly at their own tables. Solar Warden 222, hi from Berlin. Hello from Stockholm. Thanks for giving us this opportunity to talk with you. How much supplemental support will V5 be getting in its first year outside of the Storyteller's Vault, of course? Hmm? For those of you who don't know what Solar Warden 222 is talking about, the Storyteller's Vault is um, our online um, storefront where uh, anyone in the fan community can create fan, fan materials to support um, White Wolf books. So if you ever wanted to write your own Vampire the Masquerade supplement about your own city or dive deeply into some aspect of a clan or even create your own bloodline, you can do that through the Storyteller's Vault program. But to answer the actual question that's asked, uh, in the first year, what you'll see is uh, two additional books coming up uh, in the months right after Gen Con. One is the Camarilla setting book, and the other is the Anarch setting book. We dive very deeply into both of those factions, and we show you how they've changed and evolved in the modern nights and what they've become. Noise Angel, does Canadian blood taste ever so faintly like maple syrup or Molson Gordon, Molson Canadian? Mm. Well, that's a really good question, and to answer that, I think that we're going to refer you to some of our Canadian vampire experts. If you'll bear with me, I'll guarantee you a personal response to that after I've had an opportunity to do a little taste test with them. Who's next? Alessa Mulcavian from Brazil, about Brazilian fans. Hello, Brazil. The question that doesn't want to silence will put an end to speculation from now on. How does the new corporate's policy see the Brazilian market, and if the vampire will be translated in Portuguese? Please say that yes. De Vere is not talking about years. I, I, if I understand correctly, what you're asking is, um, how does White Wolf see Brazil, and will there be a Portuguese translation? So let's answer the second question first. We are working very hard and as quickly as we can to um, arrange for localizations and translations of vampire uh, into uh, as many languages as we possibly can, including Portuguese. We don't have an exact date for you today, but the minute we have one, we'll announce it and we'll tell you who we're working with um, in your country. Uh, we are deeply grateful to um, all of our fans around the globe. And Brazil has been an important part of the fan community 
of the world of darkness um, almost since day one. Uh, it's been uh, a great um, it's been a great feeling to know that in Brazil we have a huge community uh, of fans who love the game, who support it, who play tabletop, um, who play in live action role playing games, and who are just as eager as we are to see the game uh, flourish in your country. Nicholas Milioni says, hello Jason, it's very nice of you to do this. Here are my questions. There are multiple questions here. Here we go. One, do Malkavians in the core rulebook have access to dementation? Yes. Two, how does thaumaturgy work in V5? Differently. Very briefly, the Tremere have undergone some changes as a result of what has happened to uh, vampires in the modern nights, and thaumaturgy will look a little different to you. Some of the paths that you may be familiar with may not be present immediately. They may be harder to access. Uh, you'll find out why when we release the book, but um, don't worry. Thaumaturgy and blood sorcery is still there, and the Tremere still have access to it. Three, is the independent alliance from Mind's Eye Theater part of the V5 metaplot? No, not at this time. Uh, By Night Studios publishes the Mind's Eye Theater LARP products, and um, when it launched its own Vampire the Masquerade Mind's Eye Theater um, book, uh, it had a storyline that um, bifurcated, that uh, separated from the, uh, the official core. It's not a canonical storyline, um, and whether or not the Independent Alliance ever makes a, an appearance in V5 will be up to um, development in the future. Four, will Asimites be detailed in the Camarilla sourcebook? That is a very, very good question, and I don't have a good answer for you yet since we are, very, we are finishing the development of the Camarilla sourcebook right now. I can tell you that they're mentioned both in the uh, core book and in the sourcebook. How much you'll see of the Asimites will depend on a couple of questions that we have to answer for ourselves very soon. Vaden, if I'm being honest, a lot of the responses to feedback, for example, the pre-alpha and the alpha, seemed knee-jerk and condescending. Has there been thought given to, a pr to the approach to response? If I understand correctly, um, Vaden, you're, you're asking what we're going to do to improve the way that we respond to um, the concerns of our fans. What we're doing today is one of those ways. Um, by coming to you today and talking with you one-on-one -on -one like this um, and giving you a forum to ask questions, we hope that we're showing you our commitment to improving how we engage with the fan community as we go forward. We understand the value of listening to you and getting your feedback. Um, and uh, our pledge to you, our promise, our commitment is that we're going to do better at it and that when we do write our responses, we have the concerns of the community firmly in mind. Joe Terranova asks, Hi Jason, my questions are most related to the Mind's Eye Theater LARP side of the vampire setting and how V5 will affect live action vampire. Can you address what the relationship will be between the new V5 tabletop setting and future Mind's Eye Theater versions of vampire? Will these setting changes affect the meta plot for the upcoming Blood and Betrayal LARP Chronicle? Hmm, there's a lot there. Okay, so, um, as I mentioned before, By Night Studios is a licensee of White Wolf, and we work closely with them to make sure that our, our products are aligned to um, the, uh, the needs and um, the expectations of the story that uh, White Wolf provides. Um, we definitely do intend to uh, bring the Mind's Eye Theater um, story in line with um, V5 eventually over time. Um, just like we will do in tabletop for V5 in Mind's Eye Theater, we'll make sure that um, our Mind's Eye Theater customers and players and storytellers have all the tools that they need to calibrate um, their games uh, to make sure that they're right for all their players and to make sure that the story elements that we provide for the Mind's Eye Theater Chronicle are appropriate to those venues. Not every story element um, for tabletop may be appropriate to LARP and vice versa. So we will bear that absolutely firmly in mind but we will also be seeking feedback from our Mind's Eye Theater customers 
in the Mind's Eye Theater community as we go about that process so that we can understand what your expectations are from a V5 LARP Chronicle. El Goblino 666, what can you tell us about the Nosferatu in V5? Are they still hiding and brooding? Well, they're still masters of concealment, uh, if that's what you mean. They still have um, the obfuscate discipline and they still have problems showing their true faces uh, in public without some, um, without some help. And if you, if you can see that, if you looked like this, you might want to hide too. Um, as for brooding, I think that's probably left to the conscience of the individual Nosferatu. What happens with the clan, though, in part of the Metaflot, is particularly interesting. As the, uh, the Second Inquisition becomes a problem for the vampires and brings technology into the hunt to, to um, capture or eliminate the undead, the Nosferatu have faced some very difficult choices about how they interact with the rest of the kindred society and what happens to them with technology and how they use it should be pretty interesting to see unfold at the table. X-Predator 1, can I buy that shirt? Well, this particular shirt I'm rather attached to and fond of, but there will probably be an opportunity to buy Vampire the Masquerade shirts and, and uh, other merchandise in the very near future. Come talk to us at Gen Con. Cyberbot Eye says, Hey Jason, Joe Karen here from Portland. Hi Joe. Hope to see you out here again someday to play. My question as a player focused on LARP. Will you be continuing to work with Binite Studios for a V5 version of Mind's Eye Theater? Or will White Wolf work on its own LARP version in the future? Um, what steps will you be encouraging to ensure any such LARP is inclusive and perhaps help create positive community engagement. Okay, I talked a few moments ago about um, By Night Studios' ambition to um, make sure that there's a V5 Mind's Eye Theater uh, product and Chronicle in the near future, and we definitely do plan to do that. Um, that doesn't mean that you won't see other V5 LARP, uh, LARPs, events, and products uh, from other licensees too. We have uh, we had some great experiences with LARPs recently uh, around the world, such as um, Enlightenment in Blood, um, and end of the line, and those can all be considered um, preludes to the events of V5, and I think you'll see other V5 um, LARP opportunities, not just from By Night Studios as well. As for inclusivity, absolutely. Uh, By Night Studios is very much committed to it. Uh, one of the products that we're most proud of, we published last year called Mind's Eye Theater uh, Immersion Secrets, and it's an essay by um, Mind's Eye Theater storytellers and players that um, create um, a, a set of best practices and suggestions for um, how to um, make sure that games are inclusive and welcoming and provide um, tools that players can use to um, calibrate the intensity of their games. Um, those techniques range from things that we all know about and are familiar with, such as the, the red card or the OK check-in, but also pre-care and after-care, which are very, very important whenever you're engaging in very intense role-playing activities like live action. Caffeinated Conquests. Sincere question, but what is the issue with Blood and Souls? It's the second time I've heard it mentioned in that way. I thought Martin Elrickson thought it sounded cool. Okay, interesting question. I'm going to turn around for a moment and show you the back of my shirt. I hope, that, I hope the camera can see it. Can the camera see it? Okay, White Wolf. So in 1986, two brothers in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States, named Stephen Stuart Wick, founded a company called the White Wolf Magazine. And uh, it was a magazine dedicated to um, covering fantasy role-playing games and fiction and art of all kinds. That was the origin of what we know today as White Wolf. They took the name White Wolf from the novels uh, of Michael Moorcock, uh, who's one of the finest living fantasists uh, in the world. Michael Moorcock's signature hero, Elric, was also known as the White Wolf. Martin, who um, uh, has the pen name 
uh, Elrickson, uh, uses Blood and Souls as his uh, his SIG file because um, Elric would often cry Blood and Souls before going into battle. So it's really an homage to the very earliest roots of White Wolf. It, it reconnects to uh, something that was very important to the founders of the company, um, and it does sound pretty cool. Posier88 says, the new Hunger Blood system is great as far as I've seen. Thank you, we think it's pretty great too. It is the thing that I like the most so far in V5, but it's a very different system than the ones that we are used to. Could you tell a bit of the thought process that went into it? Absolutely. One of the things that we, um, one of the things that we realized during the early formulative processes of Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition is that um, hunger as represented by a hunger pool um, was maybe not as satisfying a role-playing experience um, as our players might want it to be. By measuring uh, blood pool one to 10, it was a little bit like a gas meter and hard to describe. You know, what does blood 10 feel like? What's blood two feel like? Mm, hard to say, but everybody knows what it feels like to be hungry. And we know what it feels like when we skip a meal or we don't eat for a day or even longer. So we decided that um, hunger would be our focus instead of blood itself. And we developed from there. Um, our design team, uh, Kareem Lamar um, and Carl uh, Bergstrom, pioneered the very earliest uh, hunger system. And they wanted to reflect um, the struggle of humanity versus the beast in a way that would feel realistic and exciting at the table. They also wanted to bring an element of risk into it so that players could decide how far to push that hunger before the vampire has to feed. And I think what they've come up with is truly innovative and really fun to play. Fairbeard says, just because it's a more fun ask, can you show us your favorite page in the book aesthetically? Oh, wow. It's a great question, but this is 400 pages of Vampire the Masquerade goodness. And to choose a favorite image out of all of them that are here would be super difficult. But since you ask, I'm going to give it a try. Um, in one of my capacities as producer, um, I had the privilege of working with our art director, Mary Lee, to produce the, um, the photo shoots that are uh, in the book. And so I was on location for, uh, for most of them. And I'll show you what I think is probably my very favorite picture. As n it will come as no surprise to anyone, it is in the Venture chapter, my favorite clan, of course. But it's maybe not what you might think. I'm just going to show it really briefly here so as not to ruin the surprise. So that was really fun to shoot. When we shot the venture, we wanted to show people who looked real and genuine and who were maybe not um, the typical image of a vampire. We wanted to show people from different parts of the world, from different age categories. Um, and so we came up with a concept that was um, this woman who uh, represents power and wisdom uh, very visually, and she's... Um, She's holding uh, the leash of her ghoul um, so that you can see that she's in control. And I think that that's very, very evocative of the clan, but also shows how we think of vampires in a very realistic and inclusive way. Plus, she was awesome to work with. Vonnegar asks, will V5 clearly state that the Bible is legit factual in the paradigm, or will the situation of the origin story, the Book of Nod and So, will be clearly just a belief system among others and not sustained by game mechanics by being true? Complicated question, but a good one. Something to remember about Vampire the Masquerade is that the, all the narrators are unreliable and hard, cold truth among the kindred 
and the Canites is very hard to come by. Many vampires subscribe to a particular belief system about their origins that doesn't make it objectively true. There are vampires in V5 who, of course, believe in the story of the Book of Nod and who believe that the Bible is literally true or referentially true. There are also vampires who believe that the story of Lilith is the truth and that um, she was the first vampire. There are vampires who believe other myths, and we don't objectively say which one is specifically true. The New Humanity System can help reflect that uh, as you create your vampire and decide what is important to, to your character. Uh, so we think that by, by not answering that objectively, we are allowing a much more uh, broad and diverse group of beliefs and a lot more fun as vampires argue about who is right and who is wrong. We have 10 minutes left in, so your last questions, please. Trogdar the Burninator says, is there anything that you are bringing to Gen Con that might surprise us? Yes, but if I told you, it would not be a surprise. Alessa Mulcavian asks, what can the fans expect about this system? Many changes compared to the Anniversary Edition V20. Will it poss be possible to use the third edition or V20 systems things, or has everything changed? Well, V5 is definitely um, a new system. Um, many things will be familiar to you. Uh, you'll still see things like um, attributes, skills, disciplines, willpower. And so if you're familiar with V20 and Vampire the Masquerade third edition, um, you will understand where those uh, mechanics play a role. Disciplines too, for example, and blood sorcery are still there. The way in which those things are used have sometimes changed. The biggest innovations really are around the hunger system, which replaces the blood pool, and the humanity system, which we've already talked we have already talked about. There is not a strict one-to-one -one conversion um, between the additions, but we think it's very easy to learn to play this new system, uh, and uh, very easy to teach it as well. One of, the, one of the best things about it, in my opinion, is that um, when you create your vampire, the, uh, the V5 book encourages you to do it at a as a group, sitting at the table together, building your vampire coterie and uh, choosing advantages and disadvantages and backstories together, not just for your individual vampire character, but for your coterie as well, so that you come together as a group, decide how you want to play, and build your story right there at the table. Hmm, this is a long one. Uh, I think I've only got part of the question on the screen, so one moment. Sin Dancer says, hi Jason, hello. Thank you for addressing some concerns we all have. As a newer player to Vampire Tabletop and LARP, will V5 be a little more friendly, rules and number crunching wise, for those of us just starting? Is there any one clan you're fond of and think might be an easy time Easy in for a first-time player. Thank you and hello from Los Angeles. Thank you and hello from Stockholm. So um, V5 is, uh, is a very easy game to learn. It's very, very easy to teach. The concepts are streamlined and simple. Uh, it will have a lot of things that are familiar to role players who are um, fans of modern game design. And um, you're going to find that there are fewer numbers and a little less what we call excise, or looking up of tables and charts, that are part of the experience. Um, arguably the most complex uh, part of the game is um, understanding uh, where the die rolls fall in terms of results. But in order to help you do that, we're introducing a set of specialty dice um, that can help you identify what's a messy critical and um, you know, what is a complete miss or failure. You don't need these special dice to play the game. Ordinary D10s work just fine, but we think they add a fun element to it. The clans that are the easiest to play, I don't, I don't think that uh, any one in particular is harder or easier than the other. We've tried very hard to make sure that each clan um, is, uh, is quite simple to get into for the newer player and that um, all a new player has to do is decide what kind of vampire they want to be or what they want their character to be 
and they'll find a clan and an archetype in the book that is easy for them to just grab and go. Occulto Zealot. If your team is serious about not marketing to neo-Nazis, can you be sure to put more care into editing and writing process so that blatant dig whistles like 1488, a reference in the V5 playtest book, for example, on page six, doesn't get into final draft or even get, even better, never gets into any draft? Thanks. Well, thank you for asking the question. And the answer is yes, absolutely. We can and will take better care. Um, when we, uh, when we wrote the, the pre-alpha, we included a number of die roll examples, all of which had f uh, several numbers. And the, uh, the writer who um, wrote those examples chose them at random and was uh, unaware uh, of their greater significance. When we learned about it, we were, um, we were really upset. We felt very stupid. And we immediately... Um, removed the alpha playtests from our website, we um, changed the numbers, and we've made it available for you again today. And yes, as I mentioned before, we are committed to doing better at making sure that um, uh, all of our games going forward um, have um, better vetting for global inclusivity and for awareness of topics that might be um, hurtful or um, that might be um, taken in a way that could be encouraging groups that we don't want as part of our community. A Coffee Cake asks, any info on Demon the Fallen? Broadly, will it maintain its roots in the um, Abrahamic faiths? I do love Demon. Unfortunately, though, I don't have any new information for you there. It's too early to start talking about it yet. We have a very rough idea of what my uh, Demon 5th edition might look like. But um, unfortunately, I don't have any solid information or details that I could share with you today. We just finished Vampire, literally just finished Vampire, and we're turning our attention next to Werewolf. And after that, maybe we'll talk about Demon. Fairbird, are there upcoming fleshed out clan books for V5? So the answer is not yet. The first two books you'll see are the Camarilla Guide and the Anarch Guide setting books that I mentioned, and then you'll see some information about the Sabbat next year. Clan books, on the other hand, not yet in development. That's something that you might see from one of our licensees, on the other hand, uh, rather than from White Wolf Entertainment. Lay's Design says, is there any chance that you will disconnect the community moderation from people in the White Wolf payroll. Lots of valid points are suppressed just because the writer's feelings are getting hurt, not just in the last week, but generally. So community engagement, something that we are very much committed to. And as I've talked about briefly, um, we want to do a lot more positive engagement with the community. That will require community management, and we think it's a good idea that White Wolf um, does have oversight over that management, but that doesn't mean that we won't be looking for um, additional help from the community itself, maybe from volunteer moderators, maybe from um, representatives from different countries or different fan communities that are out exe that exist out there now or that are to come, um, because we we do need help in understanding what the needs of the fan community are. So while I can't pledge that we're going to pursue any particular one structure, I can pledge that we're going to do better and that we're going to try to make sure that um, opinions are more broadly heard and taken into consideration. Blasium says, what's the current thought on how generation will be handled? Will it function much as it did in the past, with it being near impossible to raise outside of Diablery, or how or closer to how blood potency functions in Vampire the Requiem, as an example. Hmm? I ran out of coffee. So, generation, still in V5. It's still a measurement of how far your vampire character is away from the progenitor, whoever that may be. Um, but it does not carry all the exact traits that it did in the previous editions of the game. We do combine it um, with a type of blood potency to measure the relative strength of blood 
And uh, those of you familiar with Vampire or the Requiem will be familiar with that concept already. So it is possible for a vampire to be of um, one generation but a differing blood potency that has different effects in the game the generation does. The two work hand in hand, um, I think, to create a much more interesting uh, situation at the table for vampires, especially for elders who may or may not always be as powerful as they seem. Nicholas Maloney asks, will technomancy be possible for the Tremere? Well, of course, when you're dealing with a clan of uh, undead blood sorcerers and magicians, anything is possible. Um, we don't cover technomancy uh, as a path in the core book, but that doesn't mean it's not possible for it to show up later. We've got just a few minutes left, I think, so a few last questions. Carlotta Mulroney, is there LARP support in the core book? No, V5 doesn't have any um, LARP support in particular, and by that I mean it doesn't have any rules to support live action experience. Um, you'll see live action uh, V5 from our licensees going forward, both in events and in book products. Last question, this is it. Okay. Still coming through with the last question. Ars Glacialis says, can you comment on the changes that White Wolf purportedly made the Werewolf 20 supplement changing ways during the review, specifically werewolves and gender sidebar regarding trans characters? Yes, we messed that up, and we're sorry. So, thank you very much for joining us on today's live stream. Uh, I'm Jason Carl again for White Wolf, I'm the producer of Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition, and uh, we are really grateful to you for coming to us today and joining us in this conversation. Uh, we hope it's the first of many that you're going to see going forward. Uh, for those of you who took the time to be with us, thank you again. And for those of you who are watching this later, thank you. Make sure that you keep the dialogue going with us. Um, you can find us online, of course, on social media and you can reach us at info at white-wolf.com and through worldofdarkness.com as well. Thank you again, everyone.